Orson Welles. What a guy. Well-spoken, great actor, outstanding director. And at the end of his life, a very large man. I love the guy, but what happened? He was always a weighty man. But sometime in the 50s, he just blew up. Makes me wonder if I'll ever reach that size. It's tough to keep all this weight off, watching all these films alone in the dark. Pizza is yummy. And today, we see Orson in his most voluptuous and juicy role in Touch of Evil. To all you out-of-work soda jerks without a penny to pinch, to the detectives with all the answers, to the dastardly dames who play men like baby dolls, and the trusted ones too pure for this world, and all you double-crossing, backstabbing, ruthless, baby-faced amateurs, this one's for you. So suit up, turn out the lights, put the match to your smokes, and sit back for the darker side of things. Sin a shadow moonlights, noir vimper. Long takes, bud. Film fans love them, and this is one of the greatest ones. But instead of me trying to analyze it, just go right now onto YouTube and watch it. A time bomb has been set on a vehicle. It's amazing the way it grips you. The bomb could go off at any time. Charlton Heston and Janet Lee pass it by and approach it several times on their way to the U.S. border. He, Ramon Miguel Vargas, and she, Susan Vargas, newlyweds on honeymoon about to be cut short by international terrorism. The car explodes in the United States and a fountain is set aflame. Rudy Lineker was the victim, along with his ditzy lady of the night. Rudy, he was important somehow. Miguel sends Susan back to Mexico to be harassed by Grandi and stays himself to investigate. And before I get too far, I did want to bring up Charlton Heston playing a Mexican. It's unbelievable and hilarious. From Moses to Ben-Hur to Miguel. Hello, I'm Charlton Heston. I'm playing a Mexican. Vamos a la biblioteca. Hank Queenland, played by Orson Welles, shows up to the scene. Hank's disheveled and fat as hell. With an impeccable record, he's respected by all his peers, but it's all bred from corruption. And he hates Mexicans. The dark Mexican streets are covered in trash as Hank eats sandwiches. Going over to see old fling Tanya, played by Marlena Dietrich, he's barely recognizable. You should lay off those candy bars. Marlena is beautiful as ever and lit just like the old Sternberg days. Queenland and Vargas take an immediate dislike to one another. Vargas should get the hint that no one here should be trusted, and he leaves his wife alone much too often. Susan does hold her own to an extent, as she's taken to Grandi to be warned, and as a man spies on her undressing through her hotel window. She's further harassed and lonely at a hotel, which ends up being owned by Grandi. And the whole time, Vargas is being looked down upon and acid being thrown at him. Look after your lady better, man. A man by the name of Sanchez ends up being the prime suspect for the bombing. He is dating Lineker's daughter, Marcy, after all. A violent interrogation leads Quinlan to find dynamite in a shoebox, sealing Sanchez's fate and putting a nice bow on the case. Vargas knows this is horseshit, having knocked the box over previously and noticing nothing inside. Teaming up with Assistant District Attorney Al Schwartz, Vargas combs the police records for past clues. Vargas notices several instances of evidence found by Queenland and a bill of sale for dynamite. Bringing this evidence to District Attorney Adair and Police Chief Gould angers Queenland and he acts like a baby, giving up his badge as he storms out. 
They end up sticking with Queenlin, and he accuses the Varguses of being dope addicts. Grandi brings Queenlin back to drinking, and they team up for revenge. Back at the hotel, crazy nightman Dennis Weaver is overtaken by Grandi's man, Poncho. Mrs. Vargas is terrorized with music and taken after marijuana smoke and dope are left in her room. Mr. Vargas returns to find his wife missing, his gun gone, and her room a complete mess. Nightman Dennis Weaver ends up giving info that she is being held at Rancho Grande. At the ranch, Grande has done his part, and Queenland phones Vice to pick Mrs. Vargas up. But Queenland's not done. He turns out the lights, locks the door, and in one of the darkest scenes in noir history, kills Grande. A neon light is flicking on and off the whole time, giving us a sense of fear and paranoia. Queenland chases him around the room while Grandi tries to break through the transom window, ending in Queenland choking him with pantyhose. Now it's dope and murder for Mrs. Vargas. Vargas speeds into town with a vengeance, walking into a bar for questions and finding none. One guy gets thrown into a jukebox. Another, he chases down, picks up, and slides across the bar, knocking the entire bar over and breaking him into a table. Wow! In the ending sequence, maybe the best photography of the whole entire film. But you'll have to come over to my house to check it out. As the 50s neared their end, so did film noir. There were a few stragglers, like the French Noirs and the Samuel Fuller stuff, but they felt distant from the classic period. It's sad to think about, but noir grew into the modern age, inspiring thousands, from Quentin Tarantino to Christopher Nolan. And we got neo-noirs, super stylized color films of the 70s and beyond. And thanks to Orson Welles' very detailed notes, we get a look into his original vision for Touch of Evil. And I, for one, can't think of a better send-off to the coolest, darkest genre to ever hit the screen than this. <laughs>